Over 40 years ago, Kim and I embarked on a ministry journey that has now become a global network through the power of the internet. As part of this pioneering work, we are gathering people from all over the world to worship together, grow in our faith and inspire hope through an uplifting message. We are dedicated to reaching out with God's message of hope and love to all without discrimination or judgment. We invite you to join our House of Destiny free membership that allows you to connect with members from around the world. Through our prayer wall, you can post your requests and have others join us in prayer. It's so powerful when the saints gather and believe for a breakthrough. We invite you to join today. Simply click the online church login and sign up. Partnerships are vital to our global outreach, enabling us to take the love and hope of Jesus Christ to those who need it most. Our Boots on the Ground Partnership Program physically ministers to those in desperate situations all over the world. The Israel Partnership furthers Kim's legacy of outreach to Israel and Jewish people worldwide. We invite you to become a partner today. We are here for you and we have worked hard to provide the resources and tools to help you grow in your faith. Join us today and be part of a community that inspires hope, brings restoration to life and often healing from the past. Together we can make a difference and we thank you for your ongoing support. everybody guess what's happening today lots we've got Bo Polney and he wants to talk about a prophecy my dad gave I'm sure you've all heard it about the different seasons and he goes through each season of the year and Bo has really been passionate about this um about the uh about this prophecy I mean uh, he has really focused on only that prophecy and so um uh, I want to hear what he has to say now because he's got some insights and he's going to share it with us today. So let's go to the Twitter. All right, here's my Twitter page. As you can see, I told everybody to come watch us. But how am I? Oh, there. Yeah. Oh, let's look at this. Um, I, put, I reposted this right before I left to come here, actually. Uh, I thought this was a good uh, analysis because what we're, we're seeing is the young people across America shouting from the river to the sea. Uh, and I don't think they understand what they're saying. I think that they are of the belief that this is a, a saying to free the poor Hamas terrorists, uh, poor guys. They should be left to just slaughter, right? Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm being sarcastic because I'm so angry. But what that actually means is from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. Do you see the map? So when, if you're hearing young people shouting that, I, I would ask you to show them this map and explain to them that what these people are chanting is that they want to drive all of the Jews out of Israel into the sea to their death and take over the land. Now, Israel won this land fairly in a war. Whether or not you believe the Bible, whether or not you believe any of that stuff, this you can believe. They won it, 1948, 1967, 1973, They've given up land. They've given up land to these people and they still provide them with water and electricity and food because Hamas does not. Hamas has taken over this area. They captive, they kept, they've made their, their citizens captive. Uh, they use them as human shields. So may I ask what anybody shouting from the river to the sea expects Israel to do? Must so they just sit back and allow Hamas to come in and slaughter their own children? Would you do that? Would you sit back and let someone kill your child, your neighbor's child? Would you? 
because that's what they're calling for. So please, if you hear anyone shouting from the river to the sea, please remind them uh, or, or let them know what that means and remind them. Uh, another thing I saw here, have a look at this. Everybody's net worth. Okay, so everybody's heard about Taylor. I'm not a fan of Taylor Swift, really. Uh, but she's become a billionaire. Oprah Winfrey's got 2.7 billion. Trump's got two to three billion. And then you see these uh, uh, these three names at the bottom. Those three names at the bottom, who all three of them have more money than Taylor Swift, Oprah, Oprah Winfrey, or Donald Trump, are leaders of Hamas. So they've got lots of money, and they could easily provide electricity and water, internet, and food to the people of Gaza, but they do not. So let's just keep that in mind. Another thing I wanted you to see was, look at this going on in London. Um, I, I didn't pull the prophecy, but I, I'll, I'll bring it up for you guys next week probably. But my dad uh, was very specifically prophesying over what he called the lion countries, England being one of them, because he foresaw the rise of a fourth Reich. Do you see this? These people are po protesting. And do you see the number? Those are all pro-Palestinian terrorists who want the Jews dead. Now, a lot of them probably don't know that's what they want, but that's what's going on. Uh, so, again, how accurate my father's prophecy, the rise of a fourth Reich. He prophesied it from Europe to the first uh, time he prophesied it, he was in Holland, and the second time he was in France. Um, here's another thing my dad prophesied about the UN being a stench to God's nostrils. And if you have a look here, the chair's defense minister, Jane, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, calls to leave the UN for supporting terrorism and said three weeks ago, Hamas murdered over 1,400 Israelis, more victims for their population than Al-Qaeda murdered in the United States on 9-11. Uh, only 14 countries, including ours, have spoken out clearly against this unprecedented terrorist attack, and I'm ashamed of the UN. Chair's Republic has no place in an organization that cheers on terrorists and does not respect the fundamental right to self-defense. Let's get out. So again, we're seeing my father's prophecies coming to pass before our eyes, which is amazing. I don't know if you guys like Cat Turd. I do. I know it's <laughs> kind of a funny. Oh, Bo's there. Okay, we'll bring Bo on in a second. Hi, Bo. I'll bring you on in a second. Okay, so, uh, uh, oh no, that was just him complaining. But here's the the uh, new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. I am not holding my breath yet, but I do like what I see so far. I'm a tad suspicious as to why he, someone this conservative, was just allowed in. I'm a bit suspicious of what I, you know, maybe I'm being overly suspicious. But uh, I am feeling hopeful about what he's doing. I also feel like, the other side needs an excuse to get rid of Joe Biden at this point. So they may have, you know, the uniparty behind the scenes there at the House may have just conceded because they need an excuse to get rid of Biden. They're probably going to let this guy get rid of him. And like uh, Roger Stone fears, uh, put in Michelle Obama, possibly Newsom. Uh, if you look here, this is our Israel Update channel. Do go and, and have a look at Israel Update. We've got, as you can see, Doobie and Christy are there giving updates from the ground live in Israel. So if you are feeling that um, you can't trust the media, like all of us do, we do have Doobie on the ground giving reports. So they are, uh, Israel Update is up on the House of Destiny Network every Friday, but we have also been going live on Wednesdays. Uh, this past Saturday. So we're really focusing on Israel right now. I do encourage you to go over to the House of Destiny um, and have a look at the lineup of what's coming up. Um, another thing is do check out Jimmy Levy's new song. Uh, oh, wait, this is, the, this is a war song. This is a great song. If you don't have it, uh, get it. I won't play it for you now because I've got Bo here. Um, yeah, there was a lot of stuff in here. If you guys just, if you don't follow me on Twitter, go ahead and look at uh, or do that if, you, if you're on Twitter or not X uh, and then you'll see what I'm posting it's all whatever I post I'm posting with all of you in mind like have a look okay but I won't go on now because I've got Bo back there and I really want to hear from Bo so let's bring Bo in let's bring in Bo this is the first time I'm doing this guys here we go ah, it worked there's Bo hello, Wait, hello. My, my background picture okay he's going to put a picture in the background so we look better <laughs> I'm driving the ship today, but I've never done this Good before. Job. Well done. Good job. So I'm doing, I'm job. supposed to be doing all this. 
There we go. That looks better. I was supposed to have done that. <laughs> well, wow. welcome, Bo. Anybody who doesn't know Bo, uh, Bo and I met at the Real Lake in America tour. And man, you know, he, he does do the gold 2020 forecast, which I'll let him explain to you all about that. But um, Bo has been looking at this one prophecy in particular of my dad's uh, for a while now. And he had some insights today that he wanted to share. Uh, so before you do that, Bo, welcome. Sure. Um, Hi, thank you. Tell thank everybody about what me. tell everybody about what you do with the gold and and just a little bit about yourself, just in case anybody there doesn't know. I'm sure everybody does, but just in case they don't know who you are. Um, right. So I specifically look at the biblical timing. So that would be the best way of describing this. So it's when you read the Bible, there's numbers in the Bible. And what that means is like, so when you read scriptures, you know, when Noah's Ark, you know, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. The water raised, kept going higher for 150 days. It talks about Daniel um, and its seven-year prophecy of Daniel, the Great Tribulation. And it talks about within the Daniel cycle, you know, during the tribulation, there's a 1,200, you know, time, times and a half a time, which is three and a half years. Two of those would be a Daniel cycle. So all of this is biblical. So God's revealed to me to, you know, to a pretty impressive degree, at least. So, you know, my wife always says, you're not that good, Bo, which is true, right? It's just God is great. God is the one, right? And so I always want to give glory to God. But I, I'm, you know, I'm trying to reveal to the world of these pieces like your father, right? You know, he, see, no one sees no prophet or anyone can see through the glass clearly. They see through it dimly. And what that means is everybody gets pieces of a puzzle. What's the puzzle? Revelation. Revelation means it's a reveal. So every day that goes by, we get more revelation of to what's written in Revelation, which was written 2,000 years ago. So the piece that I provide is I take uh, the prophetic words... Uh, particularly, you know, one of the greatest prophets in our life that's ever lived is your father, you know, so what a blessing to um, listen to his prophecy. So, and when you know the truth, you know, and so when I initially heard your father's prophecies of 2014 and before all that, it was 2012, 11, I just knew. And it's so cool to be able to speak with you and hear, you know, and be here with you today. But when, you know, when I heard those, I knew they were the word of God. And just because when you hear the truth, you know it. And so over these years, I've listened to many other prophets. Uh, and the piece, again, that I add is I take the timing of some of these prophetic words that are written, and I try to interlace the Bible scriptures into the prophetic word. And so over the this particular year, God really revealed to me um, the specifics of your father's prophecy of the seasons and how it relates to potentially, I believe, this year, and you'll see why I'm saying that. And also, should that be the case, this is going to be an awesome year, because the other time points that I'm looking at and what God re revealed to me, I've just listened to the last maybe 10 minutes of you speaking, you're, and you're upset, you know, you're frustrated and upset or you're discouraged with regard to the war that's going on. See, but understand, we're going to talk about this, and I'm going to explain to you that it's all biblical. See, all of this is supposed to be happening. When you read the Bible, as wonderful and the great news that it is, it also talks about wars. What happens in wars? People die. So it's nothing's great what's going on with Israel, with Hamas, and, and soon to be the United States. All of this is a part of biblical prophecy. You can't stop what's coming. Right. So this is the thing about scriptures. You can't stop what's coming. It's, it's it's coming. You can't stop what's about to happen this month. No one can stop what's about to happen this month and into year end. Nobody. Why? Because God's about to do something. Now, between now and the great return and, and the time, you know, of, of because your father actually prophesied, you know, this we are the generation that will defy death. He did. So I, I, these are like things that I take because I do timeline analysis and I'm literally s staring at all this going, my goodness. Your, your dad literally is describing the timelines that God's revealing to me. And so I'm putting like, you know, his word onto my timing that God's showing me. I'm like going, this is crazy and awesome at the same time. 
because God's involved. So it's always awesome. But that's the thing you got, you know, you, when you look at these things, um, they're this year, next year, you know, it's going to be the best year you've ever seen in your life in the worst year the world's ever seen, right? You see, when God's involved, it's a double-edged sword. And so all of these things are about, are manifesting right in front of us. And so, yeah, there's war, but that's a part of the mystery, right? And, and so I just wanted to kind of start with that about, in terms of, you know, what I do. And, and when you understand all this, um, gold and silver tie into this exactly, uh, including cryptocurrencies. And so I, I tie the patterns into this as well, too, because you know, your father was very clear, you know, um, during, you know, there's there's a prophetic word where he goes, you know, he will raise a simple stone. Understand that your father was specifically God through your father was speaking specifically about gold. Yeah. Um, right. And 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 how will he bring down the giant? Right. So all of these things I've actually made about four or five clips that are about 30 seconds right. or one minute apart uh, so we can play a few clips. so We can discuss your father's prophecy. Let's start off with this first video. I really hope it all works because I'm using this for a platform here. You guys sent me. So let's see. Let's, uh, pray to God and say that all this works out. Here's the share screen. A veil has been placed upon this nation, and I did it! I did it! So that for a season, my people would wonder, and faith would increase. For in darkness, faith grows. In despair, faith grows. I did it! Now my fury has ended. Hear me, and your children will no longer be your food. You shall not use them and take them out of the womb anymore, says the Lord. So, what was the essence of what your father was saying? Was, is in a nutshell, uh, a veil has been placed upon this nation, and I did it. And so, you would. So, this is based on a season. And what did God reveal to me? A season is three and a half years. It's not like we would consider, oh, like nine months. Okay. It's not, it's a three and a half year window of time. That makes sense. And then it makes, and then that would be the reads three and a half years because you read Daniel 12 verse seven, it will be for time times and a half a time. That's Daniel 12 verse seven, three and a half years. So a veil has been placed upon this nation and I did it. So my nation, you know, so we would go dark and we're seeing all the evil upon the earth. And then he ties into, he mentions, you know, the, the children in Roe v. Wade in essence. Okay. And so because we've overturned Roe v. Wade, God's fury has ended. Hmm. Oh, that's good, bro. Okay. So yes. let's talk. So now, now let's go into some more uh, screen share that I want to review here for you. So let me share this screen. I'm going to go, um, this won't be all, it's just be video. Um, I mean, my, my screens here. So what you're seeing right here is specifically uh, the, the window of time. And I'm going to show you, show you here. So we're not in political times. We are living in biblical times. So yes, there's war, but that's a part of the, you know, biblical events that are going on in the world. Uh, just to briefly, anybody that wants this presentation, um, it's like 72 pages. I customize this more for your, you know, for the, for yourself, Dunay, and, and your father's prophecies. So okay. a good half of this is a chunk of it is your, for your father, okay. uh, his prophecies. So this, just scan this QR code like you would at a restaurant and you'll be able to uh, download the PDF presentation for free. Great. Oh, that's awesome. But I'm going to send it to my mother too. Yeah. So uh, I'm the last bro, everybody, by the oh. way. <laughs> so yeah, so this is really uh, I said just just some detailed information details of using biblical scriptures related to timing and then interlacing your father's prophetic word. Okay, wow. Okay, this so now right. so Daniel 12, 7, which I referenced earlier, it will be for time times and a half a time. So, like for example, let me give you examples. Jesus Christ gets baptized. He dies on the cross three and a half years later. I don't know if people knew that, okay? But he was his his time window from when he got baptized to the signs, miracles, wonders. It was three and a half years to the time of his death, and then resurrection. So it's three point five years or twelve hundred and sixty days. My point of that is, it could be anything. It could be wonderful or it can be horrific. Okay. So in this case, when you look at it, it was. 
evil. Okay. It's not really hard to figure out yeah. since January of 2020 that this was nothing glorious. Okay. It was the opposite of it. So what we've basically seen manifest is January 12th of 2020 was the first, and this is right here. I can show you the case, but basically, so um, January 12th of 2020 was the first confirmed case of COVID outside of China. So the pandemic begins. Uh, in December 12th of 2019, because of COVID-19, CD-19, okay? So this is Hanukkah. So this actually was the start. And so the first seal of revelation opened on Hanukkah in the year 2019. And then that takes us into 30 days later, because, you know, the windows, the uh, Daniel timing here, you got a 30-day window. And then that leaped us into January 12th. And now we've got a 1260-day cycle. Ah, Okay, so the 1260 days, three and a half years takes us to when? The summer solstice. So this is the part which I find fascinating based on your father's prophecy, because what did your father say? See, he talked about a season. Well, the season was three and a half years. Oh, I see. The season ended on the summer solstice. Mm -hmm. So wow. in summer is the mediator. True. Between spring and fall. So the fall can do its work do its in work. America. The next, now we step into the next three and a half years, which was from August 8th through 9th. The, the, the hurricane began on the 8th and the fires were on the 9th. I, I said something horrific is going to happen or huge going to happen on August 8th through 9th. And yeah. what do we have? The Maui fires. And that was... The Terrible. greatest fire in U.S. history happened specifically right on that time point. So what I'm showing you is this 1260 count is extremely powerful and important. Yes. So all of these things are manifesting in specific time windows. And so we're seeing crazy things manifesting. Now, just if we if we just on a big picture, let's leap forward. Right. What did your father say? I'm so look at this three and a half years. So. We know the corona, maximum evil, is at a point this past summer, right? Yes. And then you leap three. So we know the next three and a half years are wonderful years, they're not horrific years. They're wonderful. They're glory years. They'll be the exact opposite of the prior three and a half years. So what did your father say? You run three and a half years. That takes you into January of 2027. What did he say? I'm standing in what? The year 2027. Yes, and what did he say? Beyond the veil of limitations. Mm -hmm. Do you under see? Do you see how beautiful God's math is when you yeah. correlate it with your father's prophetic word? So what? They've hidden everything from us. When Babylon falls, all the truth comes out. Within three and a half years, we've got everything's revealed. So now we know about anti gravity, and we're standing beyond the veil of limitations in three and a half years from now, fulfilling your father's word. Yes, yes. The, the timing is mind-boggling how all of this is mathematical perfection. Now, let's talk about your father for a minute okay. because this is really important. Because look what happened. You know, your father, sadly, he's passed away, but he was a marker in time relative to what? Daniel's timing. Oh, wow. Perfectly. So... In September of 2015, he gets a stroke. Yes. If you so you're here, you run seven years forward. September 2022, last year, the 50 year jubilee began. Yeah. <gasps> On Rosh Hashanah. Oh, right. Next thing you know, so it's 14 months later, two cycles of seven, which is two times seven, so two cycles of two cycles of Daniel. On note, which is 14 months, he passed away in November 16th, 23rd, of 2016. November, November 23rd, yeah, November 23rd of 20. At, at, at the the year, yeah, no, so you were right. Remember, year, two, 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 two. But, but 2016, so we run another seven Daniel cycle seven years forward, and you get to what your father's prophetic word, hypnotic November. November. <sighs> wow. You're going to now, this is the even more crazy part when I run the Daniel cycle, run it on the Trump cycle. This is the craziness that starts to manifest, right? So what we're seeing right here is Trump gets elected. He wins the election on November 8th of 2016. When you run a 1260-day cycle, you get to April 20th into the 21st of the year 2020. 
There's your three and a half year cycle. It yes. will be. Look what happened. Oil dropped to negative $38 a barrel, which doesn't make sense. You understand like it doesn't, it's like yeah. oil, oil has a price. It doesn't have a negative price. Yeah. Okay. But it went to negative $38 a barrel on the 20th. And I knew that's and basically several podcasts. I said, you're going to watch something historic manifest on the 20th into the 21st of April, 2020. And we watched oil drop to negative $38 a barrel. Now this is interesting because none of this is by coincidence. It's by design, right? 30 days later, 30 days later to exact day, the Edenville Dam breaks Township of Hope, Michigan, mm -hmm. marking the birth, the water breaking before the latter rain is birthed. Wow. The, the second temple. Because how long did it rain with Noah? 40 days and 40 yes. nights. It was exactly 40 days and 40 nights from when oil goes to negative $30 a barrel that the second, the latter temple was birthed, which wow. just happened to be just like your father. It was exactly, uh, it was two cycles of Daniel. So it was, it was two cycles of 70 weeks from the Revelation 12 sign to the exact day that then that was Pentecost, May 30th, 3rd, 2020. Mm. So why I'm saying this is because, so if you run the cycle from May of 2020, 1260 days, yeah. takes you to this Wednesday, like November 1st. Uh, this Wednesday. This Wednesday. Oh my god. Which goodness means Christ. that something historic, this is not my time point, it's mm -hmm. God's. Right. So God is through his time windows showing us in advance via his calculations that something historic is about to um, potentially manifest in the in the early part of November, possibly this week. My, My cycles are pointing to a stock market collapse starting tomorrow, Monday. Really? Yeah. So we're supposed to see a stock market collapse in the early first couple of days into Halloween of this year. We'll see if it happens. But I just find it fascinating because this can't be a coincidence. We're le we're leap. You know, this the last time it happened, we had a massive crash on oil. Now I'm expecting a massive crash on the stock market on this next cycle right here. Yes, which I then can... which which then leads to the fall of Babylon, mystery Babylon, which then would confirm your father's pro prophecy, which then leaps us into because Babylon falls, you get a hypnotic November. November. My goodness gracious. And I, uh, and yeah, I, and I, 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 I may I ask one question? A couple of people in the chat have been asking if you have any insights on the Iraqi dinar. You know, he, your father did more than I do because he, he did. Actually, he definitely did. I haven't looked he, enough. He prophesied, he prophesied about that. Uh, and I don't know. I do know that the quantum financial system that the people talk about is a complete and utter lie. Okay. Um, it's a complete joke. And because That's remember, right. evil will always come in with, oh, no, we got a special thing. Don't worry. It's all going to, there's going to be special prosperity packages for everybody. Listen, evil's never going to give you anything ever. Okay. But who will is God. Okay. When God flips the financial tables on the world, right? What's, you know, the, this happened to Belshazzar, many, many Tekel offshores in the writing on the wall. You've been waiting the balances. You've been found wanting. Your kingdom has come to an end. He died that. Yes. Okay. Suddenly, suddenly, we are stepping into November, a month of suddenlies. Mark my mm. words, because God and when God's involved. Suddenly. Say again. Oh, he just that, that's something my dad. I just remember as you said it. I could remember. I could hear my own dad saying, "Suddenly, suddenly." <laughs> yeah. It's it, all. It's just we're going to watch things manifest. I don't know what's going to happen. There's been many prophetic words of things that could happen, but God's not going to reveal um, his final kill shot because, you know, um, the, the people, this is like an interesting time point. You know, all these, it will be for three and a half years. Evil's got a window. They've done all these things and they think they're winning and they're, and they're in charge of everything. But God's using us as bait. I, Ken, Ken Chris, Christmas actually said that beautifully. God used us as bait for evil. Think about like the you know what happened to ha and Haman, right? Yeah. Haman built his own gallows. Evil was so stupid to build to walk into the Red Sea. You see, as as crazy and as horrific as things are looking right now, it's like oh my gosh, the Israel War, all these things. See, yes, 
it's a part of prophecy. But on the other end, God's got a plan and suddenly everything is about to change. Mm -hmm. That's the best way I can describe it. So um, I want to stop this screen share here and then I want to um, go back to go. Let's play your father's seasons prophecy. Let's go to that here and then we can continue. But let's, let's okay. get this to play here. This will be one minute, uh, two, two minute video on this one here. Good. Let okay. me just get, make sure I get this. Uh, here we go. Summer. Summer reaches to spring and to fall. I will be the mediator, says Summer. I will uncover. Yet beneath the earth, there is a rage. Eruptions. Summer says, why choose they me? We've had earthquakes all summer. Why do the tornadoes, we the have tornadoes. choose look, me? Look, look what started the Maui fire. I am summer. One, one of the things I bring massive. smiles. Pearl, I bring sunshine. I bring warmth. Yet there is a tumultuous rendering that is coming. I stand to protect spring, but fall, you are rebelling. Or is it that possibly the Spirit of God will cause many to fall in fall? Then there is the earth that wishes to tremble. Shake for the nations of the earth. We had earthquakes. Stand waiting. However, there is an uncovering of great evil. And I will start from the top. The text that came out. I have shaken the Democrats and will shake the Republicans even more. But remember when these tremors and when these tumultuous moments happen, Summer says, I will take it so that the fall can do its work in America. For the summer, shall bring forth much in the temperatures strange july strange july the hottest summer in history hypnotic november there's your hypnotic november and oh christmas where winter shall say and me i will make them happy for god says i have chosen each season to manifest something and it shall come to pass and in the fall that which comes down is that which was able to be shaken and i will build and release the resources your great wealth transfer. and in the fall will show you whom i have chosen to pray for and guide this nation you shall rejoice for it is my man it is my chosen david says the lord wow that is incredible i love hearing it. that that prophecy just every time i hear it, it gives me chills anyway but it was always such a mystery yes you know and so when you look at this this was nine years since you prophesied this um and then in the fall you will know who my david is so just to give people expansion on that fall doesn't end until the 21st of december okay right that's okay. true i was just looking that up that is true yeah, so it goes all the way until the 21st of December. We've got hypnotic November. Now, the other thing we want to tap into is November. What's so special about November? It's a couple things, but one of the most important things I want to tap into with regards to the month of November is specifically this screen right here, and it talks about Thanksgiving, okay? Because what is the main holiday in the month of November? thanksgiving yes right and so what do you do in thanksgiving you 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 enjoy your sport your spoils basically you're enjoying what you've sown all year so you reap what you have sown and so when you read galatians 6 verse 7 be not deceived god is not mocked for whatever a man soweth so whatever you plant yes. if you plant good seeds you will get a good harvest you plant evil seeds, you will get an evil harvest. So whatever a man soweth, thus shall he reap. 
So the evil ones have planted evil seeds and for right. us. But when God intervenes, the whatever they planted, they get on their yes, own yes. heads. So where about and so when is Thanksgiving? It's the 23rd of November. This year it is? Yes. This year is that's Thursday, the, the November the 23rd. Of my dad dying. He you died see? November 23rd. You see? And also Thanksgiving Day is, was a very special day for our family. Um, my mom and dad uh, were very young and came into America for the first, one of the first times they came in. And it was, I think it was 1980. I might have been a year old. And it was on Thanksgiving Day, but because they were from South Africa, they had no idea what Thanksgiving was. And um, they had no money and I was a baby and there were no flights for them to get to their destination. And we were stuck on an airport. My dad ended up praying and asking God to help us. And God ended up putting us on a plane that was empty because they needed to send a plane to pick up uh, flight attendants or something. And we ended up being able to catch a ride on that. And God really took care of us. Isn't that crazy? Like, how well, great is God? His, his what a story. <clears throat> Isn't that, what, what a yeah. truly, truly amazing. Very significant day for our family. So think about this. Your father passed away. It'll be it'll be exactly a seven years Daniel cycle to the day God is going to, I believe, utterly smash these people or intervene or do something historic upon the world. Um, I, I think it's no coincidence when you read Zechariah 1, 7 through 17. What did your father talk about? You know, blessings. Mm -hmm. You know, I will raise a simple stone. When you read Zechariah 1, 7 through 17, it's based, it's very, there's a line in there. It says, my cities shall again overflow with prosperity. And it says specifically on the 24th day of the 11th month, Friday, November 24th, the day after Thanksgiving. Amazing. None of, this is a, none of this is a coincidence. No, we don't believe in coincidences at all. Not at so all. Now, so now let's let's talk about your father's uh prophecies further, but further, I know actually you were talking about the war as well, too. So as horrific as the war events are, what we need to do is further study scripture. And when you read scriptures, it talks specifically Leviticus, thou shalt consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, what are the two covenant nations? Israel, right? Yes. And what's the other one? No, it says America. Bingo. Okay. So what two nations is evil never going to get? The two of us, Israel and the United States of America. That's right. That's right. But what happened was, see, there's criti critical events that happened 50 years ago. The first was abortion. Okay, so because of abortion, which was law on 73 January, that put us into the 50-year cycle. So that's why your father this year is seven-year cycle um, of we're in the seventh, we're in the seventh year for your father. Specifically, we're in the 50-year jubilee relative to Roe v. Wade of January 1973. What also happened in 73 was Nixon took us off the gold standard in 71, but 73 was a petrodollar contract, and the World Economic Forum published their Davos Manifesto in 1973. So basically, evil published all of its plans and set all of their plans in action in 73, the year that God took his hand off the world. Yes, and that was also the year my dad got saved. What a coincidence! I know, right? That's not a you see God did that, that how your you see how your father is tying into God's timing. So as sad as his death was, and the events that you know link he he I just I didn't even realize that, but his actual day he passed was Thanksgiving. When you and what was the scripture I just read? For what a man soweth, thus shall he reap this year. It's on your father's passing. And you know, seven years else, to the mark. Oh, just quickly, I just I'm just remembering this as well. Is uh, there? I have to find the prophecy because I'm 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 remembering it, but I don't know where, and I have to go look for it. But he spoke about there will be a seven year period. Uh, there is a prophetic anoint. There's a seven year period, and he talks about a prophetic anointing that will carry you until that year. So here's the answer to your question. So this is what you just said. So again, what do I study is to hit God's timelines, okay? So here it is. So remember the, what, tell me, 
anybody who studies scriptures, there's all you know, everybody knows that this is the story of Joseph. Yes. Okay. That's important. So when so the some the calculation, what did it say? The calculation started on when? August 8th through 9th. So the, let me pull this the slide here for the calculation. The, the calculation started August 8th through 9th, and it goes all the way to the year 2027. Right. There's your seven year. Actually, this is sorry, three and a half years. But then there's another, that's only half the cycle of Daniel because the, the other cycle of Daniel takes you seven years. So it's a seven yeah. year cycle. And so what a coincidence that the story relative to Joseph was what? Seven years of plenty. Mm -hmm. Why did God give Egypt or Israel, the nation, seven years of plenty to prepare for the what? Coming Heaven. famine. Yeah. And famine. Okay. So God does nothing before for speaking through his servants, the prophets. We know there's a what coming in the future? A great what? Tribulation, right? There is. How long is a tribulation? Seven right. years. What did your father say? Be he basically talked about seven years. What he was saying was before the tribulation comes, seven years of plenty precede it. You know, it's very interesting you're bringing up Joseph as well, because I've, I've I, another person who's sort of seen this as well is Trey Smith. And he talked quite a bit to be about the, the same thing with the Joseph. And he was saying the same thing about the seven years of plenty and the famine. And and you know what? This was before we met that he I'm remembering something old. I would have to ask him about it now. But this is when I first met him. I remember him talking about the Joseph and, and, and making the same uh, not so much with the time that line that you have, but recognizing it uh, as being important. Right. Yeah. No, it. all of this, it's just everything is just so amazing. And I, it's so fun to talk to you because these things are coming to pass that you're telling me that I'd even know about some of this information. So it's amazing when you even take your words and, and interlace it deeper. All of this is just historic days that we're watching manifest right in front of us. I just, I just love this. Um, actually, let me go to the next one here. This is the, your father's prophecy about war. And now we can talk about um, what's going on with war right now. So let me share this okay. screen. And people will become very afraid. They'll say, we have no protection. And then God says, am I impressed with your weapons of war? Am I impressed with the strength of your men's legs? Ha! I have said I will bring this nation to its knees. And God said, you have been humbled. And yet some more. And then you shall hear the sounds of great victory. So there you go. So as much as what's going on in the world right now with the war, yeah. God's letting them bring the United States and the world to its knees, particularly the world, particularly Israel and the United States. He's letting this happen. We are the bait. Yeah. Get it? So the United States will be brought to its knees, but the United States is not anything but what? A corporation, which is a dead entity. Okay. The United States, that was found, one nation founded under God. That's long gone, people. They sold us off to, it, to, 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 to Great Britain years ago with the treaties. And now we're a corporation. We pay our taxes to the Queen of England. So all of this was, you know, ex exposed in death by Jan Halper, you know, and so I've known about this for 10 years already. But now it's the world is starting to realize how the United States operates. And so the fall of the United States is horrific as it, you know, might feel because this is the nation founded under God. It's not they sold it out. Now it's a corporation that's a dead entity. And so like baptism, you have to do what? Have to die mm. to be to be reborn. Born. Mm, that's very and, interesting. And so, and this is why your father's prophetic word ties in with this because he talked about Trump, right? And so, yeah. what was the set? What was the prophetic word about Trump? Let's have a listen to this, okay. and and you'll see what he's saying about. And now you'll start to maybe have we'll have a little bit of a deeper understanding is what he was saying about Trump and the second term. So let me let me play okay. this here starting behind my back going in the form of an arrow for hundreds of thousands of people and I turned around and I was stunned at what I saw this was not just a mere dream but this was a vision and so I raised my hand like this and every one of them raised their hands 
I looked back and they were doing the same thing. I shouted and they all shouted. They were one. They were one. One party. One party of people. It continued until I realized that the unity of these amongst them stood one that God had set aside to be the leader of this nation. God says, I will put at your helm for two terms. A president that will pray, but he will not be a praying president when he starts. I will put him in office and then I will baptize him with the Holy Spirit and my power, says the Lord of hosts. So, what is the essence of that? He's going to have two terms, but the second term he gets baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then right. both parties fall and there will only be one party. You see, Trump can't be in office for the collapse of the corporation, United States, because then that will be on the fall of the trumpet. You can't yeah. on God's anointed. So he's about to return after God intervenes and Babylon, Babylon, the great has fallen. She has become a dwelling place for demons and this is the humbling and then some more i often uh, bring that up to people that i i believe this that during this under the biden administration this is the and some more <laughs> yes and that god god would humble america it would be necessary you know humbling you know it sounds bad but it's actually a really good thing uh everybody should go through that some humbling every now and then because it keeps us grounded um you know so as individuals that makes sense and so it makes sense uh, as we go through this, that this is what's going on. Uh, and there will be, you know, there's been so much pride um, and so much division that it would at this stage, I, I believe, require some humbling on everybody's part. You actually used the, the, grass, the best word was um, humbling. You know, it's just the division and you will bring this nation to its knees. You know, people, um, people uh, have gotten so attached See, Satan stole our inheritance in the garden. Yeah. For generations now, everybody's chasing finances because Satan set the world up that way. You see, you have to continue to increase your finances because the money supply keeps expanding. So you're always chasing. You're, you can never catch up financially. Yeah. You're always chasing because everything gets more, getting more expensive all the time. So you never have enough. So you always have mortgages. You get mortgage prices keep going up. Everything keeps expanding. Gas prices keep going up. I'm, and I'm, you're always what chasing. What you're saying is I'm just sinking lower because I understand all these. I didn't realize. I looked at myself and I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> But yes, yes. You're feeling it. You're you're feeling yes, it. Okay. So, said, so so he, so Satan stole our inheritance. He's making us chase everything now. We the, most of the world, you know, most people in the world don't have anything. Barely have enough. Satan's you know liar, killer, stealer, thief. Yeah. He lies, kills, steals, destroys. But what does God come to bring? Life, life more yes. abundantly, right? And so that's a kingdom, a kingdom, God's kingdom. But Satan's world is a system of lack. And so because of all of this going on, God wanted to humble, you know, he wanted to humble everybody and then he's going to make it worse yet. Okay. Most millionaires and billionaires are going to lose everything. The markets, when they collapse and then followed by the U S dollar collapse, uh, it's going to lose the status of the world reserve currency, fulfilling the prophetic word of your father, both the brothers of Goliath. When the U S does, the brothers are of the bricks and the Goliath is the United States. And we'll play that prophet in just a second. It'll be the last one I play, but that's going to fulfill your father's words. And that will be utterly the collapse of the United States and the financial system we know. And that's going to remove idol worship. Be like, well, I don't worship money. Well, you may, or you don't, but you do, because if you're always chasing money to go pay your bills, because Satan set the world up that way, and you've got a gas bill, utility bill, like the bills are just up to yin yang. You got every bill people pay, right? That's kind of the world is set up that way. And so because of that, everyone's paying these bills. Um, in a way, you're not, you don't think you're worshiping money, but you are. And so the, the point is, see, the way God set this up, you can't serve two masters. So what do he say? And what he, he said, you can't serve two masters. And what did Moses say to Pharaoh? Because this was God's word to tell to Mo Pharaoh, let my people go. What does that mean? Remove them from bondage, free them from bondage so that they can go in the wilderness and worship me. 
So what is he saying? He goes, because if my children who are called by my name, you know, they have everything they so. need, then all they have to do, because everything's provided for. See, in yeah. a godly kingdom, everything's provided for us. So all God wants you to do is relationship. He wants you to worship him. Mm -hmm. Relationship with God. That's yes. all. That's the simplicity of the world. I'll give you everything in the world. Worship me. You know, have mm -hmm. a relationship with me. That's how simple this thing is. But then evil comes in and then screws everything up. So God's got to destroy the financial system. Because like, why are you excited about that? Like Claire's, hey, why are you excited about that? Because the financial system is a Babylonian system based on a fraud. So why would I be happy about, you know, about a system based on a fraud from what I've learned? I, you know, and the, you know, why is it a fraud? Um, because Nixon took us off the gold standard again in 71, 73, the petrodollar contract, the, the, the BRICS, uh, the Saudis now joined the BRICS. Okay, so there's no more petrol in the U.S. dollar. That's 73 contracts done with, okay? And so it's only a paper entity, which we know burns in a fire. So the the BRICS are now, the Saudis joined the BRICS, now fulfilling your father's word. All that's missing mm -hmm. is they're going to cripple us. That's all that's missing is that. That's what, they, that's what it says in the prophecy. Saying, yes. We will cripple so, you. We will ruin your credit. Yeah, so let, let's play that right yeah, here. Now, now we go can finish up in this oh, last couple of slides here. Let me just let me pull this up here. And then I heard gold the giant of death the giant the giants that have come the brothers of Goliath stand in glee watching America we will cripple you you will lose your credit but God said watch I said 20,000 look not to Wall Street however observe and they shall say, what is your plan for this, this giant? And he will take a simple stone. Remember the name. And he will hold it up and they will laugh at him. But the plan is so brilliant, says the Lord. It could only have been given by me. For it is now time for me to restore the fortunes of Zion. The fortunes to those that had it once. You are going to get it back. This is my promise, says the Lord of hosts. Give him a shout. So, oh, really, the damn music, I know the prophecy so well. <laughs> I love, so it's just fan. It's so exciting. You know, he's going to restore the fortunes of Zion. So what are we talking about? What are the fortunes of Zion? It was stolen in the garden, right? So God's going to restore this day. Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Mm -hmm. That's the restoration of the fortunes of Zion. Wow. So where is that in biblical prophecy? It's the third seal of Revelation. I was about to say. <laughs> okay, so that's that's exactly where it is mm. at. So we've opened the screen here. So we've got we've got the seals of Revelation manifesting. We've got first seal Corona, second mm. seal peace taking peace taking from the earth, and now we're at the third seal. And the writer himself has got scales in his hand. Okay, so the scales right. represent the financial system the black horse is the angel of death that visited pharaoh remember israel wasn't touched they passed over israel passed over goshen he went for israel for egypt's firstborn so we're going to see maths mass amount of deaths in the world and that's going to be coupled directly with the financial scales rebalancing where to, you know, uh, the uh, was many, many tackle offshores. And you wait in the balance is found wanting. Your kingdom has come to an end. So all of this is manifesting right in front of us, relation to specifically Leviticus. It's written. It is written. It is written. It is written. You know, thou shalt consecrate the fiftieth year. Yeah. Seven years from your father's death is now. It is. I was just saying that no. just the other day. And, just said it. and it, and it right. happens coincidentally to be the 50-year cycle. So your father's death seven years prior is lining up on the mark of the 50th year written in Leviticus. So let's do some math, which I think you're going to appreciate. Okay. Six-day war. I know you mentioned the wars before. My they grandmother was there in Israel in 1967 during that war, and she had to be hidden away in a bunker. 
Do you realize and she was what there to ask? Day? My grandmother was there in Israel because she wanted to understand the Jubilee. And she wow. was running around Israel with her father trying to speak to the rabbis, but they didn't want to speak to her because she was a woman. And then yeah. the 1967 war happened. But what's interesting for me, and the reason I'm bringing that up, is because of my grandmother and the Jubilee year that you just said. And then you pulled up 1967 and my grandmother. She was a huge influence on my father's ministry and helped my mother and father all through the years. Uh, she died 50 days after my father as well. So there's the 50 again. And now you're, you're that. yeah. so that's very interesting, Bo. Donnie, you, um, your family. Donnie, it's incredible. <laughs> the math behind your family. And none of us are good at math. So none of us noticed until we started meeting people like you. <laughs> Whoa. The math behind your family freaks me out. It's yeah, crazy. We're bad at that's, math, but it holy appears our lives. I know it is incredible. It is so incredible. It, Truly incredible. And, and just as a, as a, I'm not sure if you know, but you know, you know, the last day, the sixth day, right? Mm -hmm. You know, God was involved. Do you realize that, you know, you hear that the, there's the, the story of the tanker, uh, the, the gunner for the tank, for, for the Israel tanks? Yeah. There was a gunner uh, for the Israeli army that was controlling the, uh, the final tank. And they had like, they were almost out of tanks. And there's a gunner. And then, he, they had like 50 or 60, whatever round, I forget the whole story. They had like maybe 50 or 60 rounds. And then the Arabs had a maybe like 40 or 50 tanks. And the gunner would like shoot and he would hit the, take out the tank. He would move, shoot, take another tank out. He did this for a few hours and he, he wouldn't miss. He couldn't miss. Wow. He took out yeah. like 40 or 50 tanks every single round. The Arabs freaked out. They thought that Israel had a mass amount of tanks showing up. So they basically waved the flag and they and they re, and they re basically um, ceased fire um, on the sixth day. Hmm. So God showed up. When God showed up, it was over. It was over. And therefore, the seventh day was a day of rest. Why I bring this up is because what God revealed to me with regards to timing. So the sixth day war. Now, when you understand scriptures and you read Exodus, what does it say? You know, you're supposed to work for six days and then do what on the seventh day? Rest on the seventh. That also directly in Exodus 23, 10 through 11, 23 says you're supposed to plow the fields for six years. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Shemitah, means rest on the seventh. The Shemitah. Well, let's do Shemitah cycle. Okay, okay. so 1967. Yeah. We're going to run a jubilee first. So the jubilee is 50 years. Guess what year you get to? Oh, the Revelation 12 sign. Your father <gasps> my mother and I covered that September. extensively in 2017 when it happened. So now share because this with my dad's your prophecy from April of 2009, where he, okay. he spoke about the woman that was with child. Yep. I mean, it was incredible. But anyway, go ahead. No, so please share this with your mom. I'm sure you should be watching this, but, but share this because this, this is the, the piece that you're, that God revealed to me to add to what your father was speaking. Mm -hmm. wow. If you add six years, you plow the fields for six years, you are to do what on the seventh year? Rest. If you add six years to, nine, to 2017, you get 20, 2023, 23, which means wow. that God's work will be done before year end so why will this september be i believe your father's prophetic word hypnotic november and winter says what i will make you happy because why god intervened when wow. god intervenes you get your hypnotic november which then leads to joy the joyous most joyous christmas and celebration the world has ever seen. This is not God's Christmas. He was born 9-11, but God's going to use their holiday to mock them. He's going to he's going to destroy their plans for Christmas and bring upon his own plans for Christmas, all because of what happens at thanks now into Thanksgiving and in the month of November for when, and literally seven years to the exact day your father passed is this September. That's incredible. Third. Freaky as all heck, but not because it's by what? Godly design. It is. So yes. it's sad your father passed. It's sad the war is going on right now, but the war itself, men understand uh, the war started six. So remember the 50 year Leviticus cycle, right? So 50 yes. years to the exact day. I knew a war is going to break out. I'm probably the only person in the world to call the exact day on the war. It happened exactly like forecast. That's incredible. The war started on October 6th. It came to an end on the 26th. When did the United States get involved in the war? Oh, on the 26th of October. Yes. Do you understand the freakiness of. <laughs> 
the, the war started 50 years ago to the exact day on the 6th. Our, so fifth, so the war that just started in October was 50 years to the exact day, within yes. 24 hours. Then the United States gets involved on the exact day that the Israel war came to an end on the 26th. Good heavens. We struck the, the we started striking last week on the exact day, the 26th. So is the United States got involved on the exact day. That's now it gets even more exciting because if you run a, the, the war itself, the peace treaty, the ceasefire agreement was signed on November 11th, 11 11. 11 11. 11 11. I was just For, looking at that date. I was about to say, why do you have November 11th there? Yeah, 11 11. 11, 11. And then, so the, the crazy part is if you run a 1260 day cycle from when the second seal manifest Pentecost of 2020, if I can find that slide, that actually takes, here it is right here. So you run, here's uh, Pentecost, the year 2020, George Floyd Wright, second seal manifest. Um, and so peace, that's, uh, May 30th of 2020, Pentecost, 1260 days. It's exact same day, 11, 11. My goodness gracious. So does something happen on this day? I don't know. I'm just telling you that November has got some powerful, powerful time points in it and then that led to a final uh a final uh um a ceasefire agreement which was signed in may of so that will be may late late may this year uh of, of coming up to next year 2024 potentially so again um yes it's war is horrific yes we don't want to see people die and yes when you read the bible many people died and there's wars because why because of the nephilim that are on the earth the antichrist you know it's basically the evil you know, evil you know the bloodline god's you know, trying to yeah. trying to get, destroy them ultimately but yes. when you read matthew 24 and this is kind of a nice place the last few slides we can end here you will hear of wars i think we're doing that right now and yeah. you will hear of wars and rumors and of rumors wars. of wars but see to it that you are not alarmed. Don't be deceived. Don't yes. be alarmed. Such things must happen. But the end is still to come. Because what happens before the tribulation? Seven years of what, Donne? Seven years of, what did your father say? We're going to have seven a seven-year window. And this yeah. is going to be a seven-year window of plenty. Mm -hmm. Right? And it's, then it comes will be a prophetic anointing that will carry you to that year. Thank you. I've got to so find much. the prophecy, but I remembered it when you were saying it. Yeah. So how because beautiful. That had always been a question for me. I, you know, and because I'm not one of these timeline numbers people, my brain just doesn't work that way. And so, you know, I, but I always, I remember that prophecy just, this, some of them just stay with me because I don't understand them and I know I need to wait on them. And that one in particular, because he, he didn't often give exact timelines or dates. Well, because uh, it's, never it's, the, it's that glass thing, right? We see through the, the glass dimly. Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to go exactly. into the details that I'm doing right now if I didn't have your father's prophecies. You see what right. I'm saying? So you get a bit, he gets a bit, everybody gets a little bit. And then, it, and this is why he called it, my dad used to say about code breakers, that's why I call the show this, is that it's like putting, weaving together a tapestry and everybody's putting their bits in and there's a big picture that we're all meant to see. And so th that's giving purpose also because, People often with prophecy, you know, it, it can be so, it can be used as entertainment for people who are observing it because, you know, maybe they're not involved and it's quite alarming when you, when you actually witness it. But it, it isn't supposed to be entertainment. It's supposed to be to help us, little lights along the way. And then as we come together and, and we bring our, uh, our information, whatever God's revealed to all of us, and the coming together is where the power is. The unity, when he said, when my father saw the scales removed from eyes and they were one, one party of people, um, that's, that's, very, that's a very important part of all of it, I believe. And, you know, you, the way you do this um, really is, is quite incredible. I, again, this is not something I would be able to do. But I know that ever since meeting you, you've definitely opened my eyes up to a lot, Bo. A different oh, way you. of thinking. I'm going to let you do the thinking of it, and then you can tell me because my brain doesn't work that way. But when you lay it out like this, it is so astounding. And um, I know everybody here has been really enjoying it. I've, I've sort of kept my eye on the on the chat a little bit, but it is hard to, to read it all while I'm, I'm looking, but uh, a lot of people are getting what you're saying. Wonderful. And yeah, also and, have and their own little dates that are lining up in their own lives. And that's important too. 
Yeah, um, and it's like these dates are always for other people. You know, many people like your father. This, you know, your your family's uh, lifeline and and things that are happening within your family are crazy because it's yeah. just the math. But but other people, you know, this will this will fit into other people's timelines as well too that people are seeing within their own lives as well. Like you know, it's crazy enough. I was born in year sixty seven. You know, I just how does that happen? But it, but I, it did. You know, so it's just it's interesting how all of these things are, are, are coming through fruition. But again, you know, so when you go back to scripture, because again, I always want to say, you know, it's just, I could have my opinion, but when I do these, I, I try to keep my, more my opinion out of it. I might say, hi, this could happen in the events, but that's kind of me guessing. But when you look at scriptures, you know, you always back, it is written. So when you th see things that are written, then you start doing the math calculations. Like here's another example. So we, I just read you math 24. So be not deceived, the end is not still to come. Okay, so the tribulation is still to come. So, you know, this is not World War III, but then this last line says, the last line says, all these are the beginnings of oh, birth pain. Yeah, birth pains. Beginning pain, of birth of birth, birth pains. pains. The beginning of birth pains. So now let me ask a question: Woman's cycle in the fifty-year jubilee. Let's say, so we run a so the, the mid month would be the cycle, and then you run from January mid month. Guess what you get to right about now? So October twenty-first into now. We don't know the day that a mo mother's going to give birth because right. it could be two weeks early, two weeks late. We don't, but we're right. We're in the window. Yeah. So the calculation was a 21st would be nine months exactly. So now we're in that window of birth and what's oh, coming, so a birth of a new era. What's the era? It's the fall of Babylon and the birth of God's kingdom. So this is the fulfillment. So this is, this is the fall of mystery Babylon. So before Babylon was built, God, Babel was built, God intervened. Mm. So two and a half thousand year prophecy almost built and just before it's built god intervenes mm -hmm. yes. and what did your father say now these are your father's words so your father's words layered on this slide relative to babylon so your father described in his own words or you know god used your father and spoke these words in reference to the scripture daniel 2 verse 34 and so first off just to preface that all of these kingdoms, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome, United States, papacy, everything has existed. This is the most accurate prophecy that spans two and a half thousand years. The last part of the prophecy is talks about the stone. So what is the prophecy? And the stone is Daniel 2 verse 34. While you were watching, a stone kind of was cut out by no human hand. I mean, this biblical means godly. Yeah struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed it to pieces. So what did your father or what did God speak through your father? And this is the prophetic word in reference to Daniel 2 verse 34. You're going to love this. I am the stone for this generation. The stone is my son, the rock, Jesus Christ. You're my dad. And, and that stone shall be, uh, Jesus Christ, and that stone shall be given to the Davids of this generation. They shall break down the forces of hell. They shall, there shall be no world war yet. Yes. Get it? So we're talking about this time window right now when Babylon falls. This is not the time right. for World War III. I, play, I, this played this, the, I played that prophecy just a few weeks ago on this very show. And I said, because God said there will be no world war yet because yet. you are yet to see the manifestation of a rock in the hand yet. of a generation right so the seven years of blessings are upon us that leads into the tribulation so your father was taught this is why he, this prophetic word the fall of da daniel prophecy the dan the fall of mystery babylon so right before babel was built god showed up yeah and it was destroyed right right before babylon's built god shows up and destroys Babylon. He always shows up, right? He? So, so he he th they think they got it all done, and then God, and then suddenly, then God suddenly, that's my favorite suddenly. part. Is, is this so? But isn't it beautiful when you put the scriptures with with the prophetic word? Oh, is this fun? And so let's continue. So, and then you uh, the break the force. Uh, there shall be no world war yet. I am yet to show you of the manifestation of a rock in the hands of a generation that shall break down the forces of, of hell. hell. 
the glory of God that shall cover the earth with knowledge and manifestation as the waters cover the sea. It is yet to come before I return. You are the generation that shall defy death. Right. So what is he? So we are the generation. So now what's a generation? This is God revealed to me. A generation, when you read scriptures, I don't have the slide here in front of me, but a generation is 70 years and 80 by strength. Yes. Okay, so that. now this is what God crystal clear revealed to me in reference to the war we talked about, okay? Most of when you Google, uh, Israel was born in the year 1948, okay? That is not correct. That's what God actually revealed that why it's not correct to me is very, very simple. And you'll understand this because the air here it is right here. After the first war uh, in 1948, the Arab world refused to recognize Israel's independence. So if all the entire world does not recognize independence, it's not officially born hmm. yet. I see. I it wasn't until the war of 67. So on June 6th, the, the, Israel is finally recognized by all the world as independent. And Israel is officially born. All right. So now let's do some math. If you run from 1967, 70 years, mm -hmm. a generation. Here's all the scripture. Here there. So Psalm 90, 2 Chronicles, Jeremiah 25, Daniel 9. Uh, Jeremiah 25 and Jer Jeremiah uh, 29. All of these talk about 70 years, 70 years. All A generation is 70 years. All right? Yes. So let's do math. 1967, 70 years, 20, 30, 7. The generation that will defy death. Ooh. Incredible, Bo. My goodness. You know what? I'm now, let's, gonna... not, let's wait. Let's double check our math. Okay. Okay. So what do we just say? We simply said right now, the uh, 2037, but we're in what year? 2020. We're in 23 right now, right? Yes. So let's add seven years of plenty. Okay. That's 2030. 30. Agenda 2030. Ooh, there you yeah. go. That's the first check mark. Watch. And now let's add another seven years. Oh, 2037. We just wow. confirmed our math. Oh, my goodness. Bo, you do this to me every time. You blow my mind. Now I'm going to have to go back and watch this again because of all the detail. But my goodness. Now, you guys can see why I wanted Bo to come on here and explain this to you because I would never have done this justice. But this is why God anoints certain people to do certain things. And like I said, I'm so terrible at looking at this stuff and my brain just doesn't work that way. But when you bring the right person in and have them looking at the prophecies, how much more you can get. And really, that is what has been going on here today. My goodness gracious. Well, listen, Bo, we are actually out of time. We're over. No, I know. Yeah, I just, I'm surprised. that I'm surprised. was a beautiful I'm ending point. Cool. I, thought we had I just, I'm so blessed to be here. And I was so excited to go over these with you. So this, this morning I'm getting ready. The father's like, put together the, the clips of the videos and you just shorten them so you can get, so we can get right to the point and just go through all five videos and just explain it all of what you know and thank you for giving me the time to do oh, that because no, no problem at all. I, I, just, I, I, to noticed, I just realized now i was so in, focused on what you were saying but i'm so glad you actually came by and did uh present it so that we could all see together because i think that's really helps um helps with everybody else too you know again i could try to say oh well you've got to listen to Bo, <laughs> but i'm not going to be able to explain it and you did perfectly man you've ever well and also so too much. i must add because by my doing this on a different podcast and not with you a lot of pieces would have been missed right because you know your father's prophecies probably is well, probably better than i do right so like i might say something and you add a piece and just like you know your father's passing on a certain day like what a coincidence that it's right. the 23rd of or november that in 1973 or that my grandmother in 1967 considering what you just the point you just made about 1967 she's going there to find out about the jubilee year which is what you've been to. i mean if you think about the events or, yeah, or november or november or i mean thanksgiving being such an important date for our family that was the date we landed for the first time in the united states of america and god had called my dad to be a prophet to america wow. yeah and, and your your and that. your grandma your grandma's in uh, Israel on the start of the jubil of the seven year seventy year generational cycle that yes. your father is prophesying about yes. and then the generation that will defy death. Then she died fifty days after him.
Like, how does this happen unless it's by design? It, it is God's design. That's for yeah. sure. Exactly. And you know what? The, the more that I I have this experience um, that I've had since losing my dad and doing the things we're doing, the more I, my, I am in awe of God. Yeah. I, I get Amen. shocked sometimes because, I mean, he's God. So obviously he's going to do that. But uh, to to be able to look and then understand perspective um, and see how intricately he is involved. Because I think about, think about our family. We're just one family. I mean, my dad may have been who my dad was, but we're just one family. You think about this happens in every family. It may not happen this way, but they've all got their own ways. But if you think about your family and think about things when they've happened that way, all of that is God doing that for all of us. I'm sorry, I'm getting used to this mic. <laughs> my hair is getting cut, caught in it. But you know what? We better go, but I've run out of time. But you, you got to come back. You. You, you must yes. just come back. We'll have you back soon, and then we'll see how things go. And then maybe by around December. Yeah, actually, next time we there. talk, I want I want you to let the world know. I, I love to hear your mom's, your mother's, uh, you know, take on what we talked about. This will be very exciting. I really we, want to. We hear should because, probably because do this. It, is, this is here. Kim we'll Clement's wife, mother. you know. Well, so. the, actually, everybody should pray for my mom and my brother Matt. Um, everybody's fine, but uh, the reason okay. mom has been sort of not around the last couple of weeks is because my brother Matt. Uh, had a major surgery on his uh, on his jaw. Uh, when was it? Tuesday or Monday last week? Um, and so she was getting him ready for the surgery. It was a, it ended up being a thirteen hour surgery uh, because he has wow. a growth on the side of his face. It's mm. a genetic disorder. And so once he now that he's old enough and he's matured enough, he's sixteen. They can do some surgeries to straighten his jaw. Um, but it's been very uh, painful and intense. And so that's why mom's not been around. But yeah. by December, we can definitely have you booked in so you can be with mom and I, because I know oh. she's going to want to, she's going to want to hear this herself and she's going to have things to say to you um, as well. Probably there's things maybe I didn't know as far as timelines and events that she might be able to, yeah. to give us some more information on too. So that's definitely going to be great. But thank you so, so much, Bo, for coming. It's always great um, listening to you and talking to you. You're one of our favorite people. We do love, and my mother loves you too, Bo. Um, and uh, say hello to the wife and the family, I will. I and will. the beautiful little dog. And uh, <laughs> I didn't forget about your dog. Um, to, to tell them, send them all our love from the Clement family and everybody here at Code Breakers Live today. I know everybody's been enjoying it so much. Um, I didn't get to everybody's questions, and I really hardly saw their comments. But I'll have a look. Yeah, at this this will be this will be worth watching. I'm sure. Two yes, or three it, more times or something. I'm going to have to cover a lot. <laughs> I'm definitely going to go back and watch this again because my mind kept having little explosions, but you go so fast. Bo's a bit of a genius in case you guys hadn't noticed him. <laughs> but thank you thank so you. much for joining us, Bo. God is good. And, um, we'll see you again soon. We'll have you on with mom and I. Mm -hmm.